if, um, if you could do me a favor, if you're comfortable, could you just lift your hands? Um, this is such a beautiful and special moment, and um, I think it's so important we understand the importance of what happens and the miracle that this room is. You see, if I was God, I wouldn't have necessarily set it up this way. Because it's so strange to me that God, a perfect God, desires imperfect praise. But this is the paradox of our God. He's, he's grace and he's mercy, but he's also truth and he's righteous. And the beauty you need to understand is the reason we lift our hands, the reason we're in this room is because the thing he loves most, the thing he desires most is not your performance, but your presence. We were not created to do anything for God. We were not created to check off a box. We were created to be with him. And that's what these moments are. So with our hands lifted, what we're saying is, God, we surrender. We surrender to your will. We surrender to your way. And in this moment, I pray that the peace that your word speaks of, peace that transcends our ability to understand, there are those of us in this room that have questions that we don't ever understand. Situations that we don't understand. There are things on this planet and in this earth that are happening that our minds cannot begin to comprehend. But we're so grateful for a box that you live, that, that we can um, find ourselves in. And that's the box that says, God, I don't know, but you do. So this morning, supernaturally, would you allow us to put our trust in you? I pray that these next few moments that we spend would you lift the heavy head, the soul that has felt burdened? Would, I, would a fresh spring of water start to flow this morning? For those who have felt alone, would they experience the friend of Jesus that sticks closer than a brother? For those who have questions, I thank you that you are not scared of their questions. For those who are angry, I thank you you are not scared of their anger. For those who are confused, you are not worried about their confusion. God, I thank you today that we would meet the great God, the great I am, the King of Kings, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We love you. We thank you. It's in the beautiful name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, amen. come on, can you shout amen? Well, you can grab a seat. You can grab a seat. Welcome to church this morning. I'm so glad you're here so glad you're here and um, I'm very grateful to be here I gotta say thank you so much to Pastor Irwin and Pastor Kim for letting me come and be here the, can y'all give it up for your pastors that you love them you mean a lot and um, I don't take moments like this lightly and um, I say that because I've been in a lot of these moments um, I've been in church as long as I can remember and um, that comes with a lot of bad, a lot of good, <laughs> and a lot of in-between. <laughs> and um, But this is a very sacred thing that we're a part of. And um, you need to know how important and how special you are. Uh, it's very um, easy in moments like this. Sometimes preachers get up here and they try to convince you how special they are. I am not special. I am no unique individual. I am a very regular, normal person that has had no other option but to continue to say yes to Jesus. And uh, against, my own, um, against my own performance sometimes, he's continued to guide me. He's continued to show me love. And it's because I am fully convinced that he is deeply and madly in love with every single person in this room. And you need to know um, that this is a beautiful thing um, that you're in this building this morning. And uh, I want to say something that maybe you haven't heard. Uh, maybe you have heard, um, but maybe take it for wherever you need it. But I want to say I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Me and my wife, we have made it our mission um, for people to know three things. The first one is Jesus is better than you've heard. If you've heard he's angry, he's way better than that, I promise. If you've heard he's a miracle worker, he's even better than that. Jesus is way better than you've heard. Community is way closer than you think. Don't let the world convince you that you're the only one. 
Don't let your emotions or loneliness lie to you. There's somebody on your row that is going exactly through what you've gone through. There's someone on your row who feels just as lonely as you. There's someone on your row who feels like they don't have it figured out. Don't let anybody trick you. Community is closer than you think. It's closer than you thought. The last one is my favorite one. You're doing better than you think. And there's so many places that tell us you need to be doing more. You need to be trying harder. You got to be working harder. You got to put out more content. You got to lift more weights. You got to eat less food. You got to do this. You got to do it like. And may this be the place where you come and leave feeling like I'm doing better than I thought. I grew up in a lot of church services where that wasn't the case. You left with a longer list of stuff to do. You left feeling more embarrassed of the secret stuff you're going through. Because the person up here tried to convince you that they weren't exactly like you. I'm up here with questions. I'm up here with stuff that I've asked God, why am I still going through that? I'm up here with four kids and I scream at them and then I'm like, oh gosh, I'm scarring my kids. They're going to have to go to counseling. <laughs> ah! And I got to go back and apologize to a four-year-old who doesn't care that I'm apologizing, <laughs> which makes me mad all over again. It's like, I'm saying sorry. Do you receive it or not? <laughs> Accept my apology. It's like, I'm, uh, I'm trying just like everybody in this room. And the beautiful thing is, uh, is God's grace is sufficient for all of us. And so I'm going to take the next few moments and uh, communicate something that um, is super sacred to my heart and I believe the heart of God. And so um, I would invite you to, to join me on this. Again, I already said this, but um, I think this is going to be a beautiful opportunity today. There's some people in the room that Jesus, um, you've decided to follow him as your your master, your teacher. And today this subject I think is going to be a beautiful reminder for you. There are others of you that maybe you find yourself in between. Maybe you've had a relationship with Jesus at some point or you're, you've kind of interested in him. And I think this will be a beautiful opportunity um, to glance into what full commitment of this could look like. And there are others of you that I'm very aware um, that you're just here. You're just like, I don't necessarily know what I believe or I maybe don't believe um, in him. But the lights so look, look so good in here, and it's just so nice, and I'm kind of looking for a man, so you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just up in here seeing what's happening. I am so glad you're here, and uh, I would uh, invite you to treat this message as an opportunity to get a window into um, what life could be like surrender to Jesus, and not from a place of pressure but really because it's changed my life forever. And it's done things that I could not do for myself. It has lifted my head when I did not have the energy and it has been the, the air I breathed when I felt like I was gasping my last breaths. And so I wanna read a scripture um, and um, I'll read the scripture and pray and then we will go into the word. It is Matthew chapter 16 and uh, it's a conversation Jesus is having, <clears throat> and, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump right into it. This is what the amazing Word of God says in Matthew chapter 16. It says, when Jesus came to Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or just one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, son of the living God. Verse 17, it says, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You didn't learn this from any human being. Now I say to you, you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. I want to talk to you from this subject. This is God's dream. This is God's dream. I'm going to pray one more time. God, would you bless these moments and speak to our heart? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
amen, 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 amen. Thank y'all so much. Um, so I, I love L.A., um, and one of the reasons is because I fell in love in L.A., as did everybody in this room with somebody at some point. <laughs> That's why you came from Texas, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> you mean like three people who are actually from L.A. Come on, we all on the same page. It's cool. Um, but uh, no, it, it, almost 10 years ago, uh, I tricked my family into going on a vac family vacation to Los Angeles. Um, I knew the whole time I wasn't going to spend a lick of time with my family. <laughs> there was this girl I had met named Abby Rose Henry. And uh, I tricked my family into going out here so I could sneak away and spend time with her. And uh, we fell in love driving around in a Ford Focus, spending time in traffic, listening to Laney. And uh, <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. And um, I love it. Every time we come here, I think of how crazy I felt during that time. Like, when you're falling in love, it's just ridiculous. Like, you just, like... I'm, and now, here's the thing. You'll find this out. You probably already know it. I'm a fairly dramatic individual, okay? I have four children, and sadly, they are all that. They are all extremely dramatic. Um, Abby's the peaceful one. She's super calm, graceful, and amazing. Me, um, I immediately, like, I just, I full commit. I don't know any other way to live. And so, uh, I felt like I was super charged with love walking around with Abby. Like, I was just like... I couldn't explain it. Literally the first time we're, we're, we're riding in the car early on um, and she's like, what is your favorite thing about yourself? And without even hesitating, this is what I said. Oh, my favorite thing is I feel everything so deeply. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be cool. That's what I really thought. I was like, I don't know any other way but to feel everything to the nth degree. And love is so interesting because it changes you in dramatic ways. You start acting different when you fall in love. You ever met your friend and they go, they told you they was going on a date and then they come back and they walking weird? <laughs> they're just like, Phew. they just lean in, their leg is falling asleep and their shoulders are all, it's like, what is wrong? It's like, bro, she, oh my gosh, what's her name? Like, you don't, but love changes you. Love has you act different, you talk different, you think different. You start defending differently. You start uh, uh, making allowance. The scripture says it this way. You make allowance for each other's faults. So there's stuff you don't see when you're in love. There's stuff you don't even look at when you're in love. There's stuff that everybody else around you can see, but you're so enthralled, you're so deeply moved by this emotion that it doesn't matter to you because the small faults are nothing in comparison to the beauty you're experiencing as you have fallen in love. I want to talk to you about something I fell in love with a long time ago. You see, I told you I grew up in church. My dad's a pastor and... Um, and very honestly, it's kind of a confession, and a lot of people may not feel this way, but at an early age, I fell in love with the church. I did. I know that's not the cool thing. I know that's like, you're weird. Okay, you're weird. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> I did. I, I, it, it was early on. Like, and I've been in church for a while. Like, I, I've been doing this Bro, as a matter of fact, I sent them some pictures. Can you throw those pictures up there? This is how long I've been in church. I've been a gangster up in church for a minute. Look at that hat. That's not even Easter. That's just like a Wednesday night prayer service. I'm in a pink hat. My little brother, I got that long suit. I'm about to be in the 2004 NBA draft. Like, I'm about to. <laughs> I've been out here for a minute. But that was, some of y'all thought I was Hispanic. No, that's my dad. He black and my mama's white. I don't know no Spanish. Uh, you can take him down. It's a little distracting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I've been, I've been in church for a long time, and, and, and church was, was different for me. It was, I remember the energy of my dad waking up early, and he, we, we'd print out the bulletins. 
Yeah, we print them out at our house. We had this little printer, and my mom was designing them on Microsoft Word, and she'd be putting little doves on the top of the thing and, and adding random sparks of blue light, like just random stuff. And my dad'd be like, Charles, print out a hundred bulletins. Like, Daddy, you know it's gonna be us, Lord, Lord, Mamma. <laughs> It's my family and then my cousin Corey. Like, it ain't nobody coming to church today, Dad. It's going to be us. And we heard you write the sermon, so you're going to be preaching to us again. <laughs> but I, I loved it. it. It was something special. It was, it was a light every single week. And it, it, it was, I just, I looked forward to it. I couldn't explain it. And, you know, today, I, I want to spend some time talking about how beautiful the church is. Because, honestly, she's gotten a bad rap over the time. Honestly, it's kind of fallen by the wayside. And, and because of some bad representatives and because of some bad experiences, I think we may have jumped too far to the other end to throw out the most beautiful thing God left behind. And it's super intimate and special to me because the scriptures tell us that the church is God's bride. If I t started to spend hours, I couldn't tell you about my bride. I could talk for days about Abby. I could talk for years about Abby. And the scriptures tell us that church, this, this gathering, these people, this is God's dream. I know we don't think about it like that. I know we think it's just a box to check or it's just something we do or something, honestly, that we're kind of stiff-arming. But the truth is, Jesus is in a conversation in the book of Matthew. And he's asking, hey, who do people say that I am? What, what are they saying about me? And they give all the other lists. And I love Jesus. He's so personal because he really doesn't care what they've heard He's concerned with what do they know for themselves? Because here's what I have learned about Jesus, church, and your experience with spirituality. Sometimes what you've heard can impact what you know to be true. Many of us, we heard about Jesus through the church. That's our experience. And I'm afraid to say, I, I, again, I've been in church for a long time. I've had a lot of experiences. And I'm not standing up here saying I love the church because it's perfect. I'm not standing up here saying I love the church because it always gets it right. I'm not saying up here I love the church because it's the easiest thing all the time. I'm saying I love it because he loves it. I'm saying I love it because it's the thing that he said he was going to build personally. It's the thing he was going to put his hand on. It's the thing that he's coming back for one day. And I want to invite us into a space to hold a tension. And this is the tension. The church is broken and it's God's bride. And both can be true. And I'm afraid some of us have experienced the broken side of it. And so we forget that God is the one who created this thing. Church was not man's idea. When Jesus says this word, this is one of the first time it comes onto the scene. Uh, it's ecclesia is the word he says. And it's the ones called out is what this word. When he says, I will build my church, the disciples would have looked around. You're going to build your What? Like, they didn't even know what he was talking about because this was not language that any other prophet, leader, or teacher had used. You see, Moses did not say, I would build my tabernacle. Buddha never said, I would build my temple. There are other, all religions, you can look all throughout their books and their uh, testimonies, but Jesus was the only one to claim, I want to build this personally. I want to put my hand on it. Can I tell you a secret? If you're just coming to church and wondering what this thing is about, preachers and staff members don't build a church. <laughs> that is the first mistake people working for church make. They think they build the church. We do not build the church. Jesus builds his church. We love people. He builds the church. And here, here's, here's the premise or thesis I want to submit to you today. The church, its people and its place, was dreamed, designed, and destined by God to be the primary vehicle through which Jesus radically redeems 
and restores humanity. The church, it's people and it's place. Because here's the thing you need to know when Jesus uh, would have said this word, he was not talking about a building. The church is not first a building. I know that's what we know it as, but the concept of church being a building would not have been in any believer's mind for hundreds of years during this time. They were not thinking of a place you go to. They were thinking of something you are. Here is something that may have been misconstrued to you in your understanding of church. Church is not something you go to. There is a spiritual nature that scriptures speak of. When you surrender your life to Jesus, there's language in Peter that says you become a part of the church. That you are a living stone that God is using to build this spiritual body. And and we are all connected in this beautiful way. You become a part of something far bigger than yourself. When you become a part of The church, and it's a beautiful thing because what it does is it removes this temptation of isolation, loneliness, and no one understands. Because the moment you accept Jesus, you realize there are people all over the world, just like me, who are part of this beautiful thing called the church. It is a people group, and then it is a place. You see, the reason it's important that we have this gathering, the reason is, is because what we realized in church history is Acts is when this word ecclesia explodes onto the scene. It, it happens 117 times in the book of Acts. You see this word and there's this rumbling in Acts 2. It describes the early church and it says they shared meals together and they, and they shared everything they had. And it was one of the most generous and kind places you could ever go to. And what happens is is what we have realized and what I want to submit to you is it's important to understand that church is a people group and it's also important to understand the value of the place. Here is why. Participating in the place is the only way you are formed into the actual image, kindness, grace, grace, and love of Jesus. Here's here's what I want to say. Um, It's really hard to know if you're patient if you never talk to anybody. (laughs) I am so patient when my kids aren't around. Like, I've been the most patient I have ever been (laughs) these last couple days. But it is in the relationship. It is in the dynamic of conversing with another broken individual where you find out if you have kindness or not where you find out if you have love or not, where you find out if you have self-control or not. It is in the working together where I find out where the proof or the fruit of my life comes out. So this gathering is more than singing songs. This gathering is more than just a box. It's more than just a social club. It is the dream of God to get you in this room to spend time with people who are going through things that you're going through. And here's the thing. Your job is not to build the church. It's actually to be the church. The the church. I love the church because the church is the only entity that exists for the people who aren't in it yet. There's no other club like the church. It's a beautiful thing. Other places, they're built to be exclusive and for everybody who isn't in it, it's made known you are in this club. The church is the only entity that the sole purpose is not not for everybody in here, but to get us equipped, encouraged, and inspired to go get other people who don't know yet to say, hey, we're not perfect. And today I, I, have, I have such a burden and I get it, I get it, I get it. Because I literally was sitting in the back and I'm like, Charles, do you really want to preach this message, man? I mean, let me tell you, I was telling my wife, I was like, I got some bangers in the back. I, can, I, got, the, I got a couple good ones that I could just like, rah, rah, rah. I could do it with my eyes closed. And y'all be like, oh my gosh, she's so great, blah, 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 blah. Like, I really wanted to do that. I t- I'm not lying. I almost text my girl right here and was like, change the whole thing. I got a different title, different scripture, like right before I walked out here. But I'm afraid we are missing out on one of the most beautiful things. And here's the thing. If you came up to me and you were like, 
man, Charles, like we, we, we're after service and we're out there and you come up and you're like, man, that was, that was so good, man. So nice to meet you. Man, you're awesome, blah, 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 blah. You know, but, but, but your wife, though, I don't really, I mess with you, but your wife, I just don't. She's just weird, bro. Like, <laughs> I can't. I, I, I like you. Just don't like her. You're cool. She's lame. You're nice. Don't ever want to talk to her. It's funny, but that's our conversation with Jesus. I love Jesus, but I don't love his bride. I'm down with you, but I just, I don't, I don't want that. Now, here's what I want to say. Please hear the kindness in my heart. You may have very real and valid re reasons. I want to acknowledge every reason any individual would have to have questions, to have misunderstandings, to feel like, is this what this is about? To, to be unsure of things that you've seen or heard or to be unsure of leaders that you've seen go through things or to be unsure of your grandmother who, who always pressured you and why ain't you in church and you need to go like, I get it, I get it. But have you ever been to a restaurant and had like a strange experience with the waiter? Like I'd be going to, like this, this, happened, this literally happened yesterday. This is a great story. We, we had a break and there's this place me and my wife love to go to. And so we, we go and we walk up and it's packed. I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So you can go Saturday at noon and sit down in one minute. Like it's not even like a, it's like a wait. I was like, a wait for what? What are we waiting for? Like, what, are you, what is this you speak of? I don't know these words. I, and so I woke up and I'm like, yeah, table for two. And they're like, it's an hour and a half. And I'm like, I literally said this. I said, all right, one second. And I just walked away. <laughs> I text my friend who knows the owner of the restaurant. I said, yo, I'm at this spot. Can you uh, help us? He said, yeah, one second. They literally, I'm sitting, I said, all right, cool. So I just sat back. Now here's the thing, I don't do well with stuff like this. I don't, I, this is where God has to work on me. Cause I literally, she, she was like, y'all need anything? I was like, nah, we good. We chilling. It'll be all right. No worries. No worries. Like two minutes later, she's like, uh, sir? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up? She's like, we have a table. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. Let's roll. Here's what I'm afraid has happened with church. In that example, the church is the waiter. Jesus is the owner. You've had an experience with the waiter, and the, you didn't know you could text the owner. You've had an experience with someone who kind of threw you off. You had an experience with someone that it felt like, I don't know. You had an experience that was different than your expectation. And the church has not done a beautiful job to let you know that you can text the owner yourself. You don't need this. Bill. This, is, this is the gospel. The gospel is you don't need to go through a certain person. You don't need to do a certain ritual. You can be driving in your car on the 10 talking about, let me talk to the owner real quick. Hey, I had an experience, but I know that's not you. Hey, they tried to tell me you were angry, but I know that's not you. They tried to tell me that I had to put myself together, but I know that's not who you are. Let me talk to the owner for myself. Karen, can I please get your manager? Because... I want you to know, friend, you are not helpless in this situation. You can talk to the owner yourself. You can go straight to him, and there is no way you got to go through nothing. And here's the beautiful thing. When you understand that, you're able to give proper perspective and understanding to the waiters. It's not the issue. They're not the owner. So there's always a part they're going to misunderstand. There's always a part that they're not going to convey like the owner. There's always a part that they're not going to get right. But that's not, 
I'm able to understand that because I understand you just work for the owner, but you may not always have the same heart as the owner. And when I understand that, I approach it different. When I understand that, I'm able to interact in a way because I understand I can't stop eating. I can't stop eating because the waiter threw me off. I still love what this place has. It does something to my soul. It does something to my heart. It does something to my spirit. I walk in feeling different. I don't know what it is, but they sing that song, and all of a sudden, the heavy burden that I felt feels like it drops on the ground. I don't, I don't know. Please, I'm begging you. Do not allow a couple of imperfect waiters keep you from getting what you love. What you were born to have. But you were created. So you want to know why? There's these moments, if you've ever been in a service like that, no matter where you fall on the spectrum of belief and faith, you can come in this whether you believe in Jesus or not. And there's always a moment where something happens and you think, what was that? Like, I, I, I know you may not acknowledge it. Because you're trying to act all like, yeah, this is just whatever, it's not a big deal, and I don't just... <laughs> okay. But there's like a little goosebump back here. <laughs> and you get in your car, and you're like, oh my gosh, that was crazy, oh my gosh, this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is the deepest parts of your soul finding its home. Because the scriptures tell us that God inhabits the praises of his people. So we're all in here, different issues, different backgrounds, different belief systems. But when we start to sing these songs, there's something beautiful that happens. This transcendent, infinite being comes into the room and he rests. And when you feel that rest in the room, when it feels like, I'm not so worried about that thing I was worried about before. I'm not so concerned with what people think about me. And something's telling me that it's going to work out. I don't know what that is. What's happening is, is your soul is finding home in God. And the reason I didn't change my whole sermon, although I wanted to, was because I have realized that there's no place like home. You know, I grew up in church, and I were at some churches that uh, they wanted too much from you, and it was just kind of weird. Like, I don't know if you've had an experience like this. You go somewhere, and it feels like they are acting like this should be your life. <laughs> it's the people who, like, are there and love it, but they're like, if you're not here every single day, and we're having this on Tuesday, and this on Thursday, and a class on Friday night, and then we're doing this weird spiritual thing that you want to come to, and, like, and it's like, and if you're not there, you should feel bad. Like, it's just like, that's weird. They want too much. There are other churches that have been a part of that they didn't really want anything, and it was honestly kind of weak. Because there's, there's a beautiful mix where your engagement in this body, where your understanding of the importance of this gathering, there's a beautiful mix that I have come to believe is a worthy endeavor. I love the church so much, I know it's weird. You're going to be like, man, that guy is weird. I get it, and I really don't care. I I grew up wanting to be a husband and a dad. I didn't want to be a preacher. And I've done both the things I wanted to do, so I don't really need this. Like, I'm chilling. <laughs> I really am. Like, I could drift off into no man's land and just raise these babies and listen to music with my wife. Like, I am good. But what I have found, I was talking to my dad, and, and I was talking to him about the church, and I was telling him about this sermon. And he said, you know, Charles, uh, it's always been the church for me because the church has always been there for me. Yeah. My family story is pretty wild. My parents um, had me at a really early age, and they were 19 years old, and they didn't really know what to do. And uh, they met this guy named Van Grimes. He uh, owned a car dealership. And, he gave my dad a job at the car dealership, and my dad come to find out that Van would do these little Bible studies, and he would invite him to these studies, and 
So my parents started going. They didn't really know what to do. They didn't really know where they were going. They didn't know how to raise a kid. They didn't know how to be a, a family unit. So they started going to these little Bible studies, and these little Bible studies grew into a church, and, uh, and that church was called Abundant Life. It was the sticker on that, in that picture. And the way the Metcalfs got in church is uh, one day I remember my dad being on the phone, and he starts crying, and I don't really understand what's going on, but we come to find out Van has uh, cancer. Now you need to understand, this, this is like my grandfather. This is like my mom and dad's dad. This is like, this is everything. He's kept our family together. My parents almost didn't make it in their marriage. And my dad tells this story. It's the most beautiful thing. He said, Van is sitting on his deathbed, and he looks at my dad. And he used to call my dad Bubba. He says, Bubba, you're going to pastor that church. I said, what? He said, it's, it's what you were made to do. You don't see it. But, Bubba, you're going to pastor that church. That's how the Metcalfs became pastors. My dad didn't go to school for this. I ain't got no degree for this. But what he knew is this thing has changed my life. And if there's any chance it could help someone else, I'll do it. Fast forward a little bit. We're naming our fourth child. I got four, Arlo Phoenix, my little boy, and I have three girls, Luna Rose, Jade October. And our last one is Blue Sunday. Because it's always been Sunday for me. I can't, I can't help it. It's, it's the only place that I had to go. John 6, verse 66. If you guys have that, could you throw it up there for me? It, um, it's a beautiful scripture. It says this. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Go to the next one. He says, then Jesus turned to the 12 and asked, are you also going to leave? Simon Peter, and this could say Charles Metcalf. He says, Lord, to whom would we go to? I didn't have nowhere else to go. I didn't, this wasn't my plan. Standing on this stage, talking to you about the beauty of this broken thing that got set up, that's hurt some people, but it's also been beautiful. This was not my plan, but the truth is, I didn't have nowhere else to go. And I came to tell you, I don't know what you've heard. I don't know what your experience has been. But I want to tell you, please do not take it from the waiter. Let me be another waiter just to try to speak and convey the owner's heart. He loves you so much and you belong here. And what you have done does not disqualify you. And yes, this thing is messed up, but it's still worth it. It's worth coming to. It's worth building. It's worth giving your life to. This is the thing he's coming back for one day, friend. The church is a worthy endeavor. And I'm telling you, when you understand that, when you get in this thing, it starts to do something to your life. There's no other, there's no other place like the church. There's not. I know it's got a bad rap. I know there's some things. But here's what you haven't heard. For every one news story you've heard, there's a thousand other stories of people being faithful. For every one pastor you've heard about, there's a million pastors being faithful. For every one experience... I'm telling you, don't believe the headlines. There's still good news in this place. The church is still a place of hope. The church is still a place of healing. This is still a place of peace. And Jesus is coming back one day, not for a building. He's coming back for a people. Sit down real quick. I'm about to finish. Y'all come on up because that'll help me finish. I'll be done. I'll be done. I'll be done. Here's the most beautiful illustration of the church I have um, I've seen. And I'm gonna, I, I heard this old pastor tell this story, and it was so beautiful. He said this. He said he used to have two dogs. And he has these two dogs, and they were super young, and they had a bunch of land on their back porch. And the two dogs would sit on the back porch, and they would look out into the land, and they would be looking for squirrels. And they'd be sitting out there, and they'd just be looking. And they'd just be looking out. And then they would see one, and they would take off. But over time, he said, Daisy's eyes got bad. 
And after a while, Daisy couldn't see the squirrels anymore. And there'd be times where she'd just be sitting there and the other one would take off. And he said, it felt weird because it's like she, I don't, she used to have so much fun doing this and now she can't do it. And he said, but then one day I came out and they were sitting on the back porch and Daisy wasn't facing the right way. Daisy wasn't looking out to the forest. She turned and looked at the other dog. And what she realized is I might not be able to see it. But when I watch the person next to me, when the hair on your neck goes up, when, when his ears started to purr, she said, I can't see it for myself, but when I look at you, I see something that I may not have, but I can respond to that thing. Can I tell you why it's important you come in here? Because there are days I've showed up as a pastor and I didn't see it for myself. I'll tell you, there are days I walked in and I couldn't see what God was doing. There are days where I had questions. There were days where I asked God, why am I going through it? But I start to look around and I see my friends lifting their hands and I start to look around and I think maybe there's hope for me. Maybe God can still do something. I'm telling you, friend, do not believe the lies. The church is still alive and it's the bride of Jesus Christ. And this is a place of hope, a place of restoration and peace standing all over this room. I just want to, if I could, I want to say a prayer. I want to say a prayer because I, there are some people in this room, there are two groups of people. I'll pray for two groups of people. The first group of people is maybe you're in here and you've had some experiences with church or you've had some experiences with the waiter and you need help just getting past those to the owner. You've had some, you've had some valid reasons. But you're just like, man, I, I, don't wanna, I don't want those to keep me from what I actually think could help me. If you're in here and you say, you know what, I've had some experiences, but I want, I want, to, I want church to be fresh again. I want it to be, I want it to have that spark. I remember I used to come and I used to love it. But over time, it's just kind of, it's gotten kind of uh, lackadaisical and it's felt kind of, if you're just saying, I just, I want that fresh spark. I'm interested in what that would be. If you would just lift your hand, be so bold to lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Thank you so much. I'm going to pray. Everybody, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Jesus, right now, for every person who needs that fresh start, who needs that moment, Lord, to restore the beauty of your bride, to restore the beauty of this place. Would you be so kind to do it? Every head still bowed, every eye still closed. There are some of you in here and you've never met the waiter for yourself. You can put your hands down if you're in here and you don't know Jesus. He's the kindest person you could ever meet. He's the most patient person you could ever talk to. And he loves you so much. And the scriptures tell us it's his loving kindness that draws us to repentance. If you want to accept Jesus, you want to surrender your life to him to make him your Lord and Savior. You don't have to do a bunch of stuff. You don't have to change a bunch of things. If you surrender your heart, he'll help you with your habits. This is just a moment where you say, God, I need you. I can't do it by myself. I'm, I'm going to ask you just in this room, everybody, we're going to say this prayer out loud together. Some of y'all prayed it before. Some of y'all never have. But some of we're going to all just say it and we're going to say this and for those who are stepping into a relationship with Jesus this is going to be the most important moment of your life everybody if you would if you feel comfortable please say this with me say dear God thank you for loving me I admit I've made mistakes I need you I surrender in Jesus name amen hey can we celebrate people if you made that decision so beautiful so beautiful. Sit down. Sit down. Everybody sit down, please. All right. Okay. All right. I came up at the wrong time, but the right time. Uh, isn't, it, isn't it amazing just to, to know that every day is Sunday? Every day is Sunday. Um, which makes me want to think, what's the blue for? But okay, you got your own. All right. Thank you. Charles, thank you for coming in your flowy pants. You taught me how to walk. You know, I got, I, got, I loved it. I loved it every time you turned around, I loved it. Everything, everything he brought, he left here, it was a gift to us. It was like Christmas up here. Christmas Sunday. All right. 
So look, I just want a few things. Let me, let me not. Okay, we're going. We're going to lunch. But before we do, we want to just say, I want to ask the people who have those buckets, those buckets that we decided to bring out to remind us this is how we give. We can give up here on the welcome sign. We can QR code it. Um, but I grew up with the buckets. And the buckets are coming down because there's a lot of you in here. Just give. Just give. You know what I took away today? That I am sick and t I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weird waiter. Uh, what you're talking about. I'm really sorry if I'm the one that's the weird and not in the weak, but I'm like, it's a beautiful mix here at, the, at this community, and you're welcome. You're welcome always. But I will tell you, sometimes you're a terrible, you know, we're, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. And I'm so sick of being poor. I'm so sick of being spiritually poor when we have the capacity to up our game in this world. You know, we're up in our game. We're up and we're, it's like, it, you know, we just, it's just everybody was so brilliant during the conference. And I thought, that's what the church looks like, guys. It's the volunteers doing their best and giving it, bringing it in their creative team and the worship team and all the things and all the things and all the things. And we've given this, we've been given this beautiful spot in Hollywood and in California and in the world. And we're just so much freedom here to do brilliant work. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it. But I'm so sick of poor, poor just output, just in giving, in giving. Uh, pray for the Indonesia team. We leave tonight at 1120 to go for two weeks. And it's an education tour. We're, we're teaching for two weeks, some in Milan, but we're like zero, you know, zero, like uh, we live here at sea level and we're going a mile up and we're spending a mile up in the jungle villages uh, teaching and creating new schools and just participating and encouraging them. And, and that takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of resources. You can pass the buckets because, you know, just you can, you can give at a higher level. And I, I love the fact that we, we do things like Mata. Mata, where are you? Stand up, Mata. Well, I want you to, I want you to see, I want you to see her face. You know, Mata, there are so many countries represented here. Into, the whole world is waiting to welcome you from Malawi. Can you just say? Yeah. And this is, this is why I give. This is why I give. Mata, you come 27 years old, 26? 27. 21 years old. She's so young. So, so young. Anyway, we met Mata serving alongside her in Malawi. And all the girls that you know, got around her, said, oh, we got we to gotta bring her to the U.S. And it was for a very special reason, right? We've been going to San Diego quite a lot, right? Yes. She'll be going four or five times before she goes home because we have a great partnership with an institution called Hanger Prosthetics. And you just had one little need right here. You had a big need. And uh, look at her. That's you. That's you, Mata. That's you. And just because we had this relationship with them, and they, they just said to you, they just said to us, and to you, Mata, yeah. they said, we don't know you, but we want to serve you. And this community didn't know you very well, but we just like, we love you instantly. And we want to celebrate the fact that when you got there, you got there. Can I do it? Yeah. Lou and I, we, we were just watching everything. And, and she took off the leg, like they asked her, the one that she had had for 13 years, the one that was broken. And then she talked to the doctor and he left the room and she had an idea. She said, I'll keep the leg that's causing me this much pain. I'll keep it. If they could give me the kind of leg that would help me be an athlete, play tennis, right? Can I tell it? Can I tell it? And Lou and I were just about to, like, we were just about to burst into tears, and we didn't want to be those people. So we just waited and waited. The doctor came back. I said, you, Mata, tell the doctor. And the doctor turned to Mata and said, what do you want to be when you graduate? Because she's about to graduate. And, and the, the doctor, this one's going to be a teacher. And, and so the doctor said, what are you going to do? What are you going to be? And, and, and Mata, 
She's very humble. She said, I'm going to be like you. I'm going to be you. One day I'll be, you know, the gift they gave her was worth $50,000, a prosthetic. We couldn't pay for that. Nobody could pay for that. It was out of somebody's goodness, you know, and we just become the, like, the little gap that they got you connected, right? And you, she said, I can't carry the water on my head in the village. I can't do my work. And this is going to allow her. But, but it's, it's the next thing that happened that we just, our hearts exploded. She, she said, can I just keep the broken leg? To have the one leg, the other leg, because they're two different legs, the sports leg and the normal leg. And she was willing to give up the chance for her whole life to be normal, to just be able to run and play with her students. You can hold your head up because it's, 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 you're full of dignity. You can just hold that head up high, right? And that doctor looked at us, that doctor looked at us and said, if you're willing to stay longer, we will give you both legs. I want to tell you, that's how, that's how church is to me. You know, it's how church is to me. I don't care how much you give. It's coming. I don't care who's coming through. If it's not from, if it's not from your greedy self, it's from somebody who, who's not a part of us. But I'm telling you, it's coming. All he needs is a, he needs, <laughs> right? It's coming. It's coming. So we just got to believe this. We got to believe. And you know, we're broken here. So look here. Wait, wait. Don't put your hand in there. We are going to pray over you. And we are, you know, this is first Sunday. Go out that door, have a party. Go to lunch. Uh, <laughs> see, see you next week. But um, I think we need to pray over them. And I want you in Chichewa, in your language, because heaven knows your language. Because the God who you pray to in your village for this to happen heard your Chichewa. So surely he will hear you plead for us. Can you pray for us? Thank you. Go for it. Sitting your hand to bless Mata. I don't know why you're still sitting. <laughs> That's right. All right, go ahead. Let us close our eyes and pray. Into Chaiwa. Okay. Because <laughs> we understood that. Zuko Mwambi Mu Hoka Mwamba, Chifuasha Mwanga. Family mung kan den gambe mungkadzi wazo na kudindi kadu samene nguzo mende kuduta ziko mifua ya magolo anga mene muna divata ndugudzi wambu yekuti ana ina zonye ngu so awazimene muna hantu amata kwa doza chifua ya ineyo kumano ina muna ndile ngandi joli nga kudindi kache kudu samu family nda bula kuna kwa mene gambe ndudzo zori muna limuda shiko zakale kudindi kafika kunoko muna limuda ziwa kale kudi ndiza bula kunoko chifua ya hantu amene ana bula mungu Nguwempa Ndikache kufigila, ndikache so kufigila antwena, amini, anabado wanga dineo, kumano, sana bange, sana kumane ndichu wongi yomi ndu kumane na shumine wa mbuye, ndiku vya mpani kutu mkache kwa dalisa antwose kumenaliwe, mudalisa so antwose amina mbuye kwa yanganila antwa amina anabado wanga dineo, ziku mkwa mpili chukwa, nukushuo na choli nga shumine muna lengela mwe wanga, ndabe mpazose uzanja muna nesu kristu mpumosu wa mwe, amen. Amen. amen.